Let's have a look at redirection. There's a lot of very powerful things that we can do with redirection and we've already seen a few examples in the first part. So here's my standard shell session again and let's start with a very simple example. Here we've taken the output from the echo command and redirected it into a file. Sure enough, the contents is there. We can redirect nearly everything. It's very flexible. Let's have a look. Okay, so here we have the contents of this directory. Now, what's really interesting is that if we do the standard command, ls, it's on one line. It's probably the output formatting of ls versus straight into a file where the output is not formatted. Here we have redirected the ls-l output to test and indeed we see the output. Okay, so this time we're going to do the same but we're going to append to the file a second line. If we would just specify it like this what we would see is just a single line because we've overwritten the file here. But let's start again. Test. Test 2. And this time we will append. And sure enough, both items are there. So the difference between recreate a file and append to a file. Now what we're redirecting here is the std out or standard output. There's also something like std er or the standard oops error output, if you will. Let's have a look at the difference between the two. In all the cases above here, we're just simply redirecting the standard output. So what does std error look like? Well, how about if we try and generate an error? Okay, we see an error. Now, this sort of output looks very similar to this sort of output, but in fact, there's a big difference. This output is error output. This output, on the other hand, is standard output. So how can we quantify or separate the two? Let's say that we look for two files. We're looking for the file test, and we're looking for the file test not here. Test not here is not here. <laughs> um, and so it generates an error. Test, on the other hand, is here and so it just generates the output that we expect from ls. Now, what if we redirect this output into a file? Interestingly, we only get the error back and not our normal output. That's because we've redirected the normal output into a file. So how do we redirect the error? There's a different way of doing this. We're going to say to which is a standard error output quantifier into redirection into some file as well, test 11. Now if we look at test 10, of course our standard output is still there and if we look at test 11, there's our error message. So now we've redirected the error into another file. We could specify it a little bit more clearly by simply putting a 1 here now this and this is exactly the same, um, it's like a shorthand, this one for this one. Basically we're just saying send the standard output to here, send the error output to here. And to verify, there's your test 10 and there's your test 11. Now, how about if we do not want the output of something. We could send it to a special device, a null device, consider it a big black hole, and everything that goes there ceases to be. So our output from test went literally nowhere. How about if we have that test and test not here example, and we redirect the output 
to this null device. Indeed, it's gone. How about if we redirect the error message to the null device? Nice. Now we only get to see what worked and not what didn't work. And of course, we can do things like send this to an error log, etc. How about the following? Here we're using cat and we're generating an error because the file is not there. The second file is there and the output is shown, just like it would show when we have this showing here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to redirect the error output to the SCD out error uh, output. So even though the error looks the same what has changed is the error output, in other words this bit, has now become standard output. Here it was still error output. Why is this handy? Well let's say that we want to send both items, so I could specify it like this, or I could specify it like this, to a log. Now if we have a look at the log you can see that the error showed up there as well. So we were redirecting the error into 1, which is uh, the standard output, and here we're sending all the standard output to the log. Let's have another look with ls. So we have a failure and success. We'll say all of this output to our log file please. But of course it just still shows the error message because we haven't redirected the standard error output, we've only redirected the standard output. So now we're going to say send the error output to the std out and the std out is being redirected into the log file too. And indeed this works just like the example above. Very straightforward. Another item that we can use is um, input. For instance, how about let's have a look what's in our test 10 file. How about if we redirect the output of this command into test 12 and in this command what we're doing is we're sending the test file 10 into the cat command. Let's see what happens. And sure enough, test 12 contains test 10 which is being sent into cat. Cat displays it and that goes into test 12. Very nice, for instance, when we're using the MySQL client. We could say send me test case to the SQL into the MySQL client. Send me the output to some sort of log and if you see any errors send them to error.log. Very handily we can now format the errors later on nicely display them on screen in some, for in some uh, special uh, format and we have a full log or we could just simply say just send everything to one um, big log file and here by the error log is redirected into the SD out as well. So very powerful how we can do some things. Note that all of this is different from pipes. With pipes we're just passing the output of one command to another. For example, let's see if this works. So here we're sending the output from this command into cat. Now, how is this different from the above? Here we're handing the output from one into the other. We can see how this works by using the t command. Here, t still displays the output and at the same time it copies the output into the test13 file. This is different from redirection. 
consider CAS2. Test 12 being catted into test 13. Here we don't see any output. We haven't really sort of piped anything into the T command. Instead we've redirected the output from test 12 into test 13. And there's our output. So for the moment, and we'll see a lot more complex examples later on, remember that the pipe is different from redirection. With redirection we redirect either standard output or standard error output and remember that we can also specify this as one greater than symbol for std out and we redirect std error by using two. We've also seen that we can use a pipe which is a different way of passing information from one command to another. We've also seen input redirection where we send a file into a command and then in this example we're taking the output from all this into another. We could probably even do something like get not here to error.log. Now why did this not work? No such file or directory. Probably because what we're doing here is we're not really redirecting the right way. Let's try a few different examples. This time we've sent the input from not here into this command and if there were any errors we would send it to here. In this case we've done it probably the wrong way around where we're saying send the input into the get command and then if there's any errors from the not here into the error log which doesn't make much sense and indeed there's our error message so as you can see it's a little bit of playing around. Always play around with commands inside the shell before you do something in a script. That way you know what sort of output to expect and you can get your syntax right. It's easy to make this mistake and simply think that this would work. However, sometimes in Bash um, you have to check first before you implement. And we've seen that this command works properly instead. Okay, let's move on to the next section.